to have taken their own lives over two days at the weekend. Yet the head of the HSE's National Office for Suicide Prevention hasn't been replaced since he stepped down in September of last year. Indeed, when we tried calling the National Office for Suicide Prevention earlier, this is what we heard. You've reached the HSE's National Office for Suicide Prevention. Unfortunately, there's nobody here to take your call at the moment. But if you'd like to leave your name and a contact number, we should return your call as someone as soon as possible. If you or someone you know needs support, someone to talk to, or is in crisis, please contact the Samaritans on 1850 60 90 90. Thank you. The East Galway Labour Senator Lorraine Higgins joins me now. Lorraine Higgins, you raised this issue. How concerned should we be at the state of our suicide prevention services? I certainly think that we should be very concerned, Mary. Um, you know, we've seen from the provisional figures for last year that over 500 people have died by suicide, and that's 500 people too many. You know, and of course, these figures don't take into consideration the number of people who contemplated it um, as well. So, you know, it's, it's certainly a societal scourge, and it's something that we need to tackle as soon as possible. What difference do you believe it makes that the head of the National Office for Suicide Prevention is not functioning in that role anymore, that, that there's a gap? Well, well, the reality is, you know, we need somebody um, there that's going to show leadership on the issue. You know, we need unity and we need to address the issue together. Uh, we've seen in, in recent times the job that Gay Byrne has done as head of the Road Safety Authority in reducing the number of road deaths. So um, I, think, I think it's absolutely imperative that we have somebody put in place um, as soon as possible. And I know from um, Minister of State of the Department of Health, Kathleen Lynch, uh, who has special responsibility for mental health, that um, you know, she's very much prioritising this issue. In fact, in the first week back um, in January in the Shannon, she came in and took statements on, on the issue. So we're very, very much committed to sorting this uh, societal scourge out. She's your, your Labour colleague. Um, when, when is the head of the National Office, when is, the, when is that vacancy going to be filled? Well, I haven't, I haven't spoken to her in relation to, to that, but I certainly know that um, tackling uh, the whole issue to do with suicide and the numbers that have been affected and the families um, is certainly a priority of ours. You believe, um, without obviously disclosing any personal details, can you tell us anything about the eight deaths by suicide over the weekend? Well, I, I, it has been reported to me from a number of people working in the area of suicide prevention and awareness that there were eight suicides, regrettably, um, throughout Ireland over the weekend. I believe three of those were in the Midlands and three of them were under the age of 31. Um, and, and it's, it's just a, a grave pity um, that this has happened. You believe as well that financial pressure, not just you, many people believe this, financial pressures that people are under at present, um, those pressures are responsible in some cases for people taking their lives. I've no doubt about that, Mary. I had um, several people contact me at clinics and on my mobile phone in relation to the pressure that they've been under by various financial institutions. I mean, we've just come out of um, a very robust economic time in terms of the Celtic Tiger, you know, where, where Ireland is very much a monetary utopia. Um, and we were living, I suppose, uh, the American dream in many respects. Um, but that was all down to lax governmental intervention and a blatant disregard of the regulations. And, of course, all the banks were extremely aggressive in marketing their financial products. And, and people obviously were tempted by it at the time, and, and that's what has happened. But these same people that are working in debt collection departments now in banks are, are harassing people on a daily basis. I, I've had evidence of that. What evidence have, have you had? had? Well, a number of people have contacted me and, and they've really been despairing over their treatment of some people that have contacted them from debt collection departments in banks. And, uh, you know, what I have what I've come out and I've mentioned it in, uh, in a submission in the Shannon is that, you know, while I understand the corporate world works on an entirely different basis um, to most other worlds, uh, and they're, you know, in pursuit of profit at all times. The reality is that there are provisions in uh, the criminal code, and in particular uh, with regard to the Non-Fatal Offences Against the Person Act 1997, where it's actually a criminal offence um, if, if, a, a, if a person is making a demand for payment of a debt, um, and if they were doing it by, by reason of um, trying to cause alarm, distress or humiliation to, to uh, uh, credit a debtor. Uh, well, have you information coming to you of banks or banking representatives being intimidatory or threatening to people well, it, trying it, to, to get their debts in? it's just by the series of phone calls that are causing, causing alarm and distress to people. And, you know, they, they just feel like as if they're being pushed over the edge. And, you know, obviously mental illnesses stem from, from that kind of pressure. We have to be mindful of that. And, you know, the suicide can very much be, um, you know, a permanent solution to these problems for some people. 
Coming back to the vacancy in the National Office for Suicide Prevention, have you checked with the HSE as to when the vacancy will be filled? Well, this, you know, um, suicide awareness and prevention is very much a priority of mine, and I, I've been raising it in the Shannon over the last while, and this is something that I'm committed to try and, and use my, my public role to, to source out as soon as possible, and I'll be liaising with Minister Kathleen Lynch on the matter um, to try and move this, for, this appointment forward as soon as possible. Mm. You did point out, I think, in your statement that... Um, the head of the um, Paul Appleby, the director of corporate enforcement, when his resignation was announced, they moved very quickly to keep him in place uh, until a, a replacement could be could be put in place. Would you like to see something similar happen to the suicide prevention office? I certainly would, because as I said, down to the figures in 2011 and um, the fresh financial pressures that people are under over the last number of years, and I suppose facing into this year as well, I think it's absolutely imperative. And as I said, it's um, it's number one priority of mine, and I just feel that one suicide is one too many, and you know we have to we have to stop it now. We have to ensure that we uh, stem the river of death. Senator Lorraine Higgins, thank you very much for joining us on Drive Time.